It's going to be line 15. Parameter X is passed by reference, so that means column E is going to be an alias of another column. It's AKA column which? Column C. Very good. So, so far things are fairly easy. It's not any different from the previous program. Then we continue execution inside the subroutine um, relay, and which only has two lines to execute, line 8 and line 9. Line 8 is invoking another subroutine. As a result, we have to allocate another return line number column. And this time, the invocation is on line 8, which means when we are done, we go back to line 9. And then we have to reserve another column for the parameter n. Parameter n is also passed by reference. So here is the big question. The big question is, what do I put in column G? It appears that we have two choices because we can either say that this is a reference to column E, which in return is a reference to column C, or we can say this is a reference to column C straight right away. So the question is, for efficiency, for from the efficiency point of view, which way is better? Just go all the way straight to the to the to the object, right? And that's exactly what it is. Okay. So in this class, we say that column G is a reference or an alias of column C instead of an alias of column E. Yep. Okay. Alignment on column number. You mean why do I allocate a column here and make it W? Yeah, yeah. Because W is a local variable. It is local to subroutine main. Oh, okay. And remember, a local variable does not exist until the subroutine starts execution. Okay. And you have one version of a local variable per invocation. Okay. okay? So those two things kind of go hand in hand. You know, a variable, a local variable exists only when a subroutine is invoked. And every invocation has its own copy of that same local variable. Okay? The important part, though, in this case, is this, co is this cell here. N is a, path, is a path by reference parameter. And what I'm passing to it is the reference of something else. It goes straight to the original column. It does not go back to the other alias. Okay? Now, that is important. And once again, it seems like we are nitpicking little things you know, that does not seem to be important, but it really is important <coughs> because that's exactly what any programming language will do when you pass a pass by reference parameter again by reference to something else. Okay? Are we doing okay so far with this concept? Okay. If you need to remember this, you just have to remember it, it, this is the most efficient way of doing things because otherwise you have the reference to another reference and then you have to dereference again. Look at this as making a copy of the call number. Okay? Instead of having a call number that is the call number of a call number, can you have a call number of a call number? Yes, can. Not in Not in this library. Oh, no. <laughs> when you get to CIS C310 or C, uh, at the end of 360, you may actually get to that part, but not in, in this class. Okay. That's an entirely different concept. It's called the concept of pointers, not passing by reference, which are two different things. Okay, so now that we are in subroutine add one, we have that one single line that we have to do something about, which is line three. Line three says we want to find out what is n, and we want to add one to it and store back into, into n. So we look up n, which is column G. n says, oh, I'm an alias of column C. And column C has a value of 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. What am I going to do with 6? Well, we, we, we want to store it to the left-hand side, which also specifies N. Once again, we look up N. N is column G. G says it is a reference of column C. 
So that means when I store the value 6, I change column C instead of column G. Column G does not get changed. Yep? When you declare a variable, is it actually a local variable? The reference variable is actually a local variable that exists in the block of code? Correct. But you will see what happens to W when we are all done with this, okay? Are we okay so far with up to row 10 of the trace? Okay. After li uh, line 3 in the code, we go to line 4, which is the usual thing. We look up the return line number. We know that we have to continue on line 9. Then we deallocate everything that is associated with this invocation. Then we go back to line 9. Line 9 is also the end of a subroutine. doesn't really do anything useful at this point. We look up the return line number. It goes all the way back to line 15. Then we have to deallocate the columns that are involved with this invocation. And now we continue execution on line 15. Line 15 by itself is also the end of a subroutine. So we have to look up the return line number, which is post in this case. And then we deallocate everything related to that invocation. So in the end, what happened to the value of 6? It's gone. Yep, there's nothing left of the only thing that got changed. If I did not print it out, then this program is pointless. There's nothing that you can see from the outside that it did anything useful. How, yep. How would you how would you say you want to after line fifteen executes, how would you say you still want to be able to have has a value a W with would you need a global variable to assign the value W since all the subroutines are no longer active? In the case of a C program you cannot specify any code outside of the definition of a subroutine. So everything that you want to specify must go into a subroutine. And the entry point of your code is the main subroutine. In other words, your code starts execution in a special subroutine called the main subroutine. But the invocation of main is entirely hidden and you cannot see it. Do we have any questions about this second sample program? Yep. I just had a, a question. I missed part of last week, so I'm just kind of curious on, uh, well, I guess in this case, I, I got on this screen, the uh, line number six. Where it's you mean row six? Oh, sorry, row six. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, repeat line number 15, <coughs> aka column C. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little curious on that part. I guess I'd be... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does it mean to invoke relay W double arrow X? We are invoking a subroutine. Okay. In this case, the subroutine relay expects a pass by reference parameter. Okay. And with a pass by reference parameter, you have to allocate a column for the parameter. But what you specify or what you store in that column is a reference or an alias of the column that you use to specify it. Okay. So in this case, X or W specifies a local variable, and the local variable lives in column C, and that's why we specify X as an alias of column C. Okay. So the AKA is, you know, is basically an alias of, you know, okay. has the same same meaning. Okay. So are we doing okay so far with this? Well, we got four minutes left, so I will start. I will start the next test program, but I probably won't have enough time to finish it. But this will leave you some, you know, it, 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 it's a good exercise. If you guys want to do it, go ahead and try to do it, okay? And then we'll talk, take a look at the solution next Tuesday. So define sub transfer, okay? So this program is about transferring something from one place to another place. I will pass by reference two things, okay? We'll pass by reference, you know, x. We'll pass by reference y. And then we'll pass by value a particular n. And all this program does is to specify x gets x minus n, y gets y plus n. In other words, I'm transferring n units from x to y. That's all it's doing. It could be money going from one account to another account. It could be hit points when you have you know special characters that can drain hit points from another character. I should rewrite my notes accordingly because you know I think the the game analogy works and kind of nicely with this, within this class. And once again, I will define the main subroutine here. 
and you know, just for fun, we'll have two local variables. You know, one is called tax account, and the other one is my wife's account. And we'll just say that tax account has tax account starts with a hundred bucks, and wife's account starts with this much. <laughs> I wish I had a wife like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, I, I would not want to have a wife like that because, you know, then that wife would just be bossing me around and say, you're spending my money, so you better do as I say. Yes. Okay. So, so, so the, the idea is, you know, we're going to do some transfer. How do you guys want to transfer the money? How about, you know, how about we explain why my wife ends up with that much money, which is this transfer function, okay? So we invoke transfer, and X is the one that gets decremented, so I'll specify my account, and this is my wife's account, to specify parameter Y, and I'm going to use this to specify N. Okay, what does that mean? She got all the money that I have. Yep, exactly. And define sub. Okay, so that's one thing. Okay, now if you can track this line, you know, and f figure out what it does, figure out what this line is going to do next. Okay, because you know the next one is actually going to be a little bit more interesting. So insert row, copy, paste, because this time I will specify something like this. What if I specify? wife's account twice. What if I specify my wife's account for both parameter X as well as parameter Y? This is called this is called aliasing, okay? Because from the perspective of the subroutine transfer, both parameter X and parameter Y will refer to the column that corresponds to my wife's account. What do you think will be the effect of this? Well, let's let's specify a particular amount because by this time I have no money left. So let's not specify tax account because you know that will for sure specify not no transfer, right? Because my account is down to zero at this point. So let's specify you know two hundred bucks. Okay. In other words, I'm transferring two hundred bucks from my wife's account to my wife's account. Logically speaking, what is it actually going to do? Okay. You know, from the program's perspective, when you look at the parameters. What do you think X and Y will specify? And also, what will actually happen you know, for the second invocation of transfer? Okay, so when you have time, you know, go ahead and do this. You'll probably after the exam on, two, on Thursday. But this is a good exercise. This is a really good exercise to see if you understand all these concepts. So, Yes, I did. Yes. I replied to it too. I replied to it, but I cannot remember what it was about. I'm sorry. But I know I replied to it already. Okay, I was wondering if we could do it just like we did the last time. Oh, yes. The answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So we can do exactly the same thing. Great. All right. Off the record. Yes. Well, let me stop the recording if it's off the record. Yes. Stop the record.